this gentleman today, which is often the case in, uh, in the world of IT. Uh, my name's Andrew Charles, guys. I'm the sales director at CSWIT, so uh, welcome th this afternoon. Um, there's been a, a lot of changes in the, in the world of storage over the last, I don't know, three years in particular. Um, and today we're absolutely delighted to um, showcase the new HP StoreServe 7200. Um, which is a, a real advancement in the way people use and, and look at storage um, and utilise it to run their business. Um, today we've got some industry experts that are going to discuss why 3PAR, how 3PAR and what it's going to do for your business moving forward over the next three to five years. Um, and we're going to talk about um, a free, uh, what's known as a ninja assessment where we come into your business and we look at your current storage environment and then we run this tool over it and we tell you the best way forward. Um, I'd like to welcome today um, our friends from uh, Mindjet who have uh, sponsored the, uh, the, the drinks today. Um, so Connor and Daniel from Mindjet at the back. They're going to be hanging around afterwards. Mindjet is a partner that we engage with on a regular basis at CSWIT and they offer a software that allows you to, to mind map projects and manage content really, really effectively. So they're going to be hanging around afterwards to discuss how that works. Um, Kicking it off in just a moment, uh, we're lucky, lucky enough today to have the head of HP Storage, uh, Mr. Steve Kelly over here, who's going to be talking for about 30 minutes on uh, 3PAR, how it came about and what it does. There's some really, really cool features that it does. At the, doing, doing a cooking show. <laughs> and again, a cooking show, so we're going to teach you how to make bolognese as well. Um, at the back there, after Steve, is going to be um, one of HP's uh, leading um, solutions architects, Kelvin Pine taking everybody through the management console and how easy it is to utilise the actual product itself. We have on display the HP StoreServe 7200 array which we just picked up yesterday and in about a, less than a week's time or so we shall have that up and running in our data centre um, so you're more than welcome to come back and actually see it in action. Um, and then, <coughs> pardon me, to finish off we're going to be having a Q&A &A, um, and then obviously some, uh, some, some drinks and some food in our Feng Shui garden. Um, and you can talk to uh, some, some of the experts in the room. Simon Michelli from HP, who's one of the storage specialists at the back there. Uh, John Turco, who's also from HP. And then my new solutions architect, Justin Farrow. Are you around, Justin? Sitting in the back there. So Justin started with us about a week ago. Yeah. Um, so he's come on board and he's a wealth of knowledge around HP products, fully certified across the whole breadth of the portfolio. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to the man that runs the show at HP. Uh, Mr. Steve Kelly, up to you. Yes. Is, it, is it bad form to hold this while I... No, 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 no. you're at CSWIT, mate. Not a problem. Okay. It's a Friday afternoon. It's yeah. we, we want to make this very casual. Very casual. Um, and I thought, well, see, I, I can't actually stick around this afternoon for the... What, what are we doing? We're tasting... Hand craft of beers. Hand craft of beers. Yep. And I was trying to join the dots there, because you're talking about a ninja assessment and if you, if you hop outside and some of you have already kind of gone, oh, cool, cool, yeah. beer. Um, <laughs> we actually have a Bruce Lee branded rice beer. We do. An interest assessment and Bruce Lee beer together. So I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a thread there. Um, and there's probably some other Japanese references we can come up with during the day. I'll put that down because I'm, <laughs> no, I'm probably, probably, probably going to giggle at some, at some point. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thanks, Andrew. Um, okay. CSW is a, a, a great part of ours in HP. Um, I'm joined with a couple of my HP people today. So you're going home early, there's going to be no drinks for you, okay, but I do should be duty there to, to look after you. Um, and mind you, I'm just wondering, is that the same app that I've got on my iPad? Are you the same guys? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, I, I, I didn't know. And up the back there, as, uh, as Andrew said, we've got a, um, uh, a, a new little uh, friend in our, in our family of the HP Storage product. And today, um, thanks for your time, we want to run you through, well, why is this important? What is HP doing? But also, hopefully, at the end of the day, you'll get a bit of a view, not just on talking about products and speeds and feeds, but just about how we see in the HP world infrastructure being, it has to be a lot more smarter um, and a lot simpler to use and got to integrate a lot better because one of the whole propositions we're trying to do in HP overall is converge things and, and simplify the way that infrastructure works. So, uh, Kelvin, stick your hand up, Kelvin. Kelvin, stop. Now put, put the tools down, okay? You can't do your thin provision just yet, okay? <laughs> got plenty of time for that later on. Um, Kelvin is our, uh, sort of our, our chief three-par architect down here, uh, based in uh, uh, Frog Hollow, Kelvin? Frog Hollow, Frog Hollow, um, sorry, Forest, uh, Forest Hill. Um, and we've got a whole lab there set up with all of these goodies, so we thought we'd, uh, we'd bring it out. And again, CSW now have 
um, some good capabilities. Now, this is probably one of the first units that we've got um, in country uh, since we launched this product in December. But um, we've actually been really successful with the three-part product. And today, I'd, I'd like you just to understand, well, why is that? Why have we bought this product? I started the three-part business in Australia um, just over three years ago. And since then, uh, we're now into the hundreds of three-part units sold. Uh, the count the other day was around 18 to 20 petabytes of three-par deployed in Australia and New Zealand. Um, and that's just one of the portfolio of HP products. So today, we'll run through what is that and what does it mean. Hopefully, we get some stuff out of it now. We're, we're beta testing and, and already we're, uh, we're, we're, we're down. So let's move forward. Um, it always helps when you talk about uh, a product to understand where are we coming, where is storage been, and you know, why am I in the storage business? Why are you here on a Friday afternoon to talk about storage? Um, there's got to be something compelling about it. And for me, storage is, you know, the last great mile of infrastructure in data centers that needs to be updated and modernized. And we'll talk about why that is and why the current approach to storage isn't really that effective. Because it's really important to understand that. And, you know, happy to, to get some contestability here on, on my views. Um, this is very much just, just, just one interpretation. It's the HP strategy. So when we have used this, this, this word tectonic, um, I've been in, in the business for 23 years. I started my career um, talking about local area networks and what we now look on this chart as being client server. So that's, the, that's my entrance into the, into the world of IT. And since then, I've gone through a tech, couple of tectonic shifts in my own world, one of which was uh, in the software development side of things. I ran the, the middleware tools business. I ran the transaction processing business for IBM for a number of years. So I've seen a lot of shifts in the market from how you take old stuff and move it into the world of new stuff. And typically in IT, every 10, 15 years or so, things change quite dramatically. And no surprises to see what we're all dealing with. And in the storage world, it's about the deluge and growth of data, particularly social data. Whether you're seeing that in your own environments, uh, case in point, we had a customer in Queensland the other week, um, storage is broken, uh, fallen in a heap because the front office administrator uh, decided to upload from a two terabyte hard drive her entire iTunes library onto the common sand and start live streaming across the network. Uh, you might be seeing some of that already because this massive consumerism of IT now is becoming ubiquitous. People are used to getting 4G speed to a tablet with massive amounts of storage, of course, that are unheard of back in these three different waves of the IT industry. The other stuff doesn't go away. It's just got to work in the new mode of operation. So how do you juggle that? And in storage, you know, typically most storage architectures from my competitors, and also in HP, you know, I've got a, I've got a vast portfolio of storage assets. I've got mainframe storage products. Some of you might be using uh, the P2000 or the MSA, as we call it, of the HP family, or EDA. Um, okay, these are all sort of you know back in this era, and some of you are probably experiencing pain as you start to ramp up your levels of virtualization, or want to start exposing your internal IT out via the web to your business partners or via retail, and try to manage that growth in data and the amount of transactions now that you've got to do. Not even to mention how do you back it all up when you're growing at you know, 40, 60, 80% compound growth in terabytes year on year. Okay? So what we sort of contend is that if you want to do an evolution to you know, explosion of human data, um, you want to turn more into a service provider internally. I'm not really going to so much mention the C word today or talk about cloud because enough people talk about cloud to hype it over the top. When you start to do these things and cope with that growth, not even to mention then the amount of copies of data that you probably now keep. Each business unit, each of you, each Excel spreadsheet, each PowerPoint, and of course the other great consumer of storage is SharePoint. Or as we know, SharePoint is where documents go to die. You know, once it's in SharePoint, it never goes away. So you end up keeping copies forever. And it's unsustainable. And more importantly, if you keep clogging up that old architecture that you built and bought SANS for, for the client server, and if you anyone here on a mainframe, I'll probably doubt that, but same thing, rigid and inflexible, can't scale, and you need to go on to the next. The 
thing here is that that was every, say, 10 years ago. You know, we look at uh, IBM System 390 as an architecture is well over 40 years old now. You know, virtualization was invented off that platform. It's not new. But the time frame for each of these changes, the other dynamic is that this is compressing. You know, in terms of mobility, in terms of devices, you know, I have a, I've got now an Android Google Nexus 7 tablet, which is great. I've got an iPad. I've also got a phone. My proliferation of content now is at the device end. And you're probably seeing this in your own organizations, whether it's BYAD or whatever else you've got. But more and more devices, more and more data, more and more things to back up. Everybody wants it now. Okay, so how do you cope with that? And why is storage sort of an underpinning architecture of this? I better turn it on, right? Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Friday afternoon. Um, <clears throat> So in storage, and you know, I'm not taking a dig here at my, the, the gorilla in the market, the EMC. My, my point here is to highlight that traditionally for each of these different types of storage trends, mainframe, client server, internet, or the latest and greatest storage architecture, which everybody's talking about, solid state storage, the traditional approach from, from vendor land is to say, oh, well, that old architecture doesn't work. Here's a new one. Throw out everything you've got, because that's old and you end up having lots of new things for each of these shifts in technology. And if you look at you know, my, my competitor, again, not, not having a dig, just pointing out some reality here, you've got the mainframe version, the client server version, the cut down version, the new SSD version, and then a version to wire it all together to try and virtualize it. Um, we think that's kind of a nuts way to do it. Um, not to mention that if you're trying to do object-based data or just store files, again, multiple different architectures, and HP is guilty of this as well. You know, each shift in technology, you come out with a new architecture that makes everything redundant. What it means is that you've got uh, a console that needs to manage it. You need skills to be able to provision, orchestrate, install, deliver, not to mention troubleshoot when you have a performance issue. And then when you've got to back it up, multiple backup software and hardware platforms for each of these different things. And they've all got their individual merits. But the complexity means that you end up having, even in small environments, lots of different pieces, many of which do not work well together. And I'm not even talking here about how you connect it, whether it's the iSCSI Ethernet view of the world, or it's a fibre channel as pure and holy view of the world, or none of the above, um, it's something else. So looking at all of that, again, simplicity is kind of what we're aiming for, because the alternative is, more and more islands, more complexity. And the other big killer, and I was at a Gartner data center conference in, on Tuesday in Sydney, and um, Gartner run these things, and it's always the, the, you know, the Gartner doom and gloom view of the world. And you know, the biggest thing for them was around skills. Trying to find people that can run all of this stuff, and be current, and also be security savvy, and understand virtualization, or how to tune a database, or you know, the, the application view of the world. Very few people can wire all this together. And the more and more you virtualize, the harder the, the problem becomes. Okay? And our whole view of the world is that you know, stop throwing disk and hardware a problem to make things go faster or make it more resilient. Actually try and do a lot more with a lot less and be more efficient. Okay? Because unless you do that, when you're growing at 80% compound data growth every year, you'll find yourself running out of space, a lot of wasted capacity, not really being efficient and, and blowing a ton of cash in the process. So our view and what we're going to talk today about and what Kelvin's going to show you is why we think the legacy way we can keep, you know, we'd love to sell tons and tons of new storage and SSD being the new big fad in the storage world, why we think that that's